Hello, welcome to It's Medicinal. Um, I'm Diabetic Dad, Diabetic Dad UK on Twitter. And this is Harvey, Diabetic Hello. underscore me. <laughs> Harvey, what username are you using this week? Um, my username, I believe, is something like the mattress that knew where Shannon Matthews was the entire time. Of course it is. Of course, yeah. why wouldn't it be anything else? <laughs> it's got the word mattress in it. That's the bit that is most important to me. <laughs> I bet it is. So, Harvey, speaking of which, oh, let, before we start, um, let me just, anybody listening to this, there might not be anybody listening to this, it may not be a safe for work podcast. So you may want to put your headphones on. Or just empty your home or your office before you listen to this, because we occasionally swear and talk about yeah. adult subjects. Anyway, Harvey, it's Valentine's week. Oh, no, it's a bag of garbage is what it is. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bag of gut. Why is it so bad, Harvey? Come on. What do you do not... with your husband? No, we well we don't do anything anyway. Um it's our wedding anniversary next month. Um so we concentrate on that more than anything. Um but I just don't find enforced merriment to my liking. <laughs> I am pretty miserable about everything most of the time. So that's you know. why we love you. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. That's why everybody follows me on Twitter, because I am a mardy bitch. Well, that's perfect. That is indeed why we follow you on Twitter. Um, I think I'll be, I'll be giving Mrs. Dad the usual best wishes and a firm handshake. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll move on to, you know, as you do. There's a nicely of, cut cigar. Perhaps, yes. And, and who doesn't enjoy such a thing? Oh, um, everyone enjoys a good cigar. <laughs> we certainly do. But more to the point, Harvey, there's there's dates in the calendar that are certainly important, and dates maybe Valentine's Day. Yeah, kind of. I'm kind of like it's it's just commercialized shit at the end of the day. Definitely. Yeah, designed to sell cards and flowers and chocolates and all the other bullshit, which we have to give to our partners to say, oh, I love you, please sleep with me. And maybe they will, or maybe they won't. Anyway, I'm glad you have the same opinion as me. It's, it's just garbage. I don't buy into cards as it is anyway, speaking of cards. Never mind that. Birthday cards, Christmas cards. No, thank you, no. Make me something, or do something, or write me a song. Do something nice. Don't don't give me a card. If you give me a card, I'm going to cut you with it. <laughs> well, okay, no cards for Harvey, but make him something nice. What what's the ideal gift for you then? I don't. I don't really know. I like niche kitsch sort of things like um you know things that you can't get anymore um so i'm i'm a very big fan of someone buying me something off ebay something like that um, um you know i'm very i'm very easy when it comes to actually gifts and things like that i don't really mind yeah as long as there's some thought gone into it and then i don't really care exactly uh, exactly i think i'm the same um i have kids and when they give me gifts that means more to me than somebody, I don't know, giving me an Amazon gift voucher or something, you know, something pathetic like that. If my kids make me a card, I'm I'm as happy as can be. That's all I want. And the same with anybody. If they put thought into it, fantastic. Then that's all I'd that's all I'd like. Exactly. So that's Valentine's Day. And we're both kind of it's shitty, but it's gonna happen and Twitter's gonna be full of Oh, my other half is so fucking amazing. I love them so much. They bought me some chocolates today. Wonderful. Um, what else were we going to talk? Oh, yeah. We were going to talk about um, alcohol, booze, yes. cocktails. Oh, who, does, who doesn't like a yes. cocktail? 
I think it's my mastermind subject, if I'm honest with you. Yes. Okay. I was going to say, here's your start of the 10, but that's university challenge, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Cocktails. Um, Moscow Mules, Harvey, where do you stand? Uh, I'm not I'm not a massive fan of more bitter flavours with cocktails and things like that. I prefer something really fruity and sugary, ironically. I really like sugary flavoured drinks, like when it's cocktails. <laughs> because it helps with your diabetes, of course. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, it helps to counterbalance all of the dancing. Like, I think that I am like this Cirque du Soleil style drag queen. <laughs> Um, so I think that it really helps me to dance, but it doesn't. It just makes me a mess the next day. <laughs> but so, that's that's what I like. So. Well, you like what you like, and when when you when you go out, you know, making your shapes and sipping your sweet cocktails, how does it affect you, diabetes wise? That that evening, but what about the next day? Well, I think. Um, because everybody that I've ever spoken to has got a different outlook on this than me and they tend to find that it works differently for them. I tend to find if I'm drinking, I have like a, a meal, like a proper meal, like tea time meal before I go out. Um, and I'll I'll go out and I'll drink whatever I want. I'll mix all my drinks. I don't take insulin with me. I don't do any insulin for any drinks or anything like that. Um, I come home and I've probably had like a kebab or something like that because also, you know, might as well just add on Why while not? I'm there. <laughs> yeah. um, but then I get home and usually my blood sugar is quite high when I get, but I leave it. I don't do any insulin for it or anything like that. I just go to bed. When I get up in the morning, my blood sugar is usually about six bang on. So, yeah, yeah so I don't, I don't really, you know, I treat my alcohol like it's a man. I sort of treat him with respect and then just do whatever the fuck I want and then just get out and get gone. And it works <laughs> out well for me, so it's fine. It do well, seemingly does. That's amazing. I just can't do that. Maybe it's maybe it's the alcohol that I consume. Um, we both like Stella, don't we? Yeah, well, I think, we're, I, I think we probably drink a lot of the same sort of drinks. You know, we, we drink Stella and Baileys and certain cocktails and stuff like that as well so i think that we actually drink quite similar stuff yeah. but i think it's just body wise people just react differently don't they so you're lucky uh, if i if i don't bolus for stella especially bailey's jesus if i don't if i don't bolus for that i'm gonna be 20 25 millimoles no see it yeah i never i never creep up that high with alcohol ever wow you're lucky you're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> lucky so and so it it kind of keeps you steady or even makes you well alcohol does make you fall usually do you find if you test before you go out you're lower when you come home or um i tend to find when i come home i'm higher but it's only because like i say i've had the sugary cocktails or something like that um but if i do decide that i'm it's because it depends on who i go out with who i'm drinking with as to what i drink as well Okay. Yeah. Um, like if I if I go out and I know that I want to go steady and not be absolutely wrecked and be really hungover in the morning, um, I'll drink beers because it tends to give me less of a hangover than say like spirits and wines and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then if I'm going out with friends and and the aim is to get absolutely shit faced and end up like crawling home, <laughs> um, then I'll drink like spirits, like vodka and shots and stuff like that. And I tend to find that my blood sugar will drop like massively and I will have to eat something before I go to bed. Yeah. Because, the, and I don't know whether, like I say, it's just my body, but with it just being like pure spirit, it literally just knocks me for 10. It just drops my blood sugar like that. So I know that when I'm mixing my drinks, I can be all right because I've got the sugar sugar content in there. The sugar's keeping you so, up, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly yeah. is. Yeah, that makes sense. And I suppose if, if you're coming home and you know you've hammered it and you can, you've got a kebab with you, that's going to burn away overnight as well, isn't it? So it's going to stop you, should stop you going hypo in the night. But if you're waking up on good numbers, it goes to show alcohol is good for you. Alcoholism is a job role. All you have to do is make sure that you keep control of what it is that you drink and you drink copious amounts of it and your blood sugar will be fine. There we are. We should, we, I think we should have a clinic. Imagine how, how much fun that would be as Harvey and, and Dad's DSM clinic. 
that would be amazing. But people need to be bringing in like their pens and pumps and things like that. And you know, per pen you can have a shot. There we go. Yeah. Job done. That would be absolutely fantastic. Imagine how busy that would be. You would never get an appointment at this clinic. It would be over. You'd never get an appointment because I would be passed out behind the counter. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with it being busy. It's just because I'm wasted. <laughs> I could imagine that could happen as well. So obviously... Wearing my nice little nurse's outfit as well. You know, I can see it. I can see it happening. I need a wig. You've got the legs for that. Um, I think I think you could get away with that. Some of those can't, but yeah, I think I think you could get away in the nurses out there. And and the big as well. I've seen some nurses with quite no, we won't go there. Um so speaking of being passed out, um what's your worst hypo? Um worst I've never passed out. I've never been to the point where I've needed um glucagon or anything like that. I've never been to that point. <laughs> Um, but I have been to the point where I've had that severe hypo that I've got about two hours of my life that I do not know what happened. Wow. Um, I was apparently sat in my pants on the kitchen floor, eating yogurt after yogurt, eating anything that was in the fridge. Um, and like my, my husband, like later on, I was like, oh, I, I want some yogurts and stuff. And he was like, well, you can't have any, you've eaten them all. And I was like, well, when did I eat them? And he was like, earlier. I was like, what are you on about? I've just been sat on the sofa all day. But now I have like completely blacked out, no memory of it whatsoever. Oh, so that good. that was scary. I've never touched wood, I've never had um anything as bad as that since. Um and that was not long after diagnosis anyway. I won't really show what was going on if I'm honest. To quite early um, but you were completely oblivious to to what was happening. That is yeah. Yeah, yeah not 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 a bit of recognition of what was happening to me whatsoever not a clue so I, I guess you wouldn't have known what your blood sugars were then but they must have been so low to the verge of unconsciousness i suppose yeah it's well yeah because I've, I've i've been low before like i've gotten to maybe about 1.5 before and still know what's going on going on you know it can be shaking and stuff like that but i've known where i am with it um, and I've known that I need to test my blood and know what I'm doing and known that I need to have carbs and, and all of that kind of thing. Whereas then, not a clue, not one clue that I was even, there was anything wrong with me, obviously. But I don't remember feeling bad or anything like that. I must have because I ended up in the kitchen, but yeah. <laughs> I don't remember it. Yeah, you don't must remember have been it at all. that it was happening just, yeah, after the event, completely oblivious. Wow. Yeah. I suppose we. I suppose we've all had... I don't know. I'm saying maybe we all have, but maybe we all haven't. But perhaps if you've had type one a long time, you're going to have hypos at some stage. Maybe we've all had weird incidents. I've certainly passed out. I've certainly been out cold and woken up in the back of an ambulance or woken up in hospital. Yeah, that's that's really crazy and scary to me because I've only had diabetes for four years, so I am pretty much a baby in terms of you guys when you're all on about stuff on Twitter and things like that. I'm like, yeah, cool, game on, whatever. Because <laughs> I don't I have no idea of what you're talking about because I've never had to, I've never gotten to that point. I've never had to go to hospital since diagnosis um, or anything like that. I am really fortunate to be in the position that I am that I can do things like drink and abuse my body and stuff like that. And it doesn't matter that much to me. Yeah. Um, I feel like I am very lucky that I'm in like, I'm still in like a honeymoon phase, I feel, okay. um, which, you know, they do say is supposed to finish it after about six months or so, but I don't really look after myself like the way you guys do. And I'm still, still fine. It really doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It's, it's crazy how it can just affect you so differently. Mm. Yeah. I, I suppose, yeah, four years in the scheme of things, I mean, you know, it's not actually that long. But, yeah, I, I guess your honeymoon phase should be, maybe you are still making some insulin, you know. Maybe you've still got something going on in there. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. But it's, no. it's possible, I suppose. And that might be what keeps you keeps you steady to a point. Well, there is, there is that whole theory that it's not just type one, is it? There's all the different types in type one and and all of that kind of thing. So, you know, I could be completely different. I could have a completely different theoretically thing to what you've got, you know. Yeah. Um, like health ailments, all sorts of stuff like cancers and things like that. They are different things. They're not the same thing. It's just a blanket banner. Yeah. So, you know, diabetes, I feel like, is the same sort of principle. 
Yeah, you make a good point. Certainly. Well, I, I hope you don't have to uh, ever visit hospital with it, but you know. <laughs> no, yeah, so do I. I'm really shitting myself because I know that one day that, that day will come. Obviously, you know, I think it happens to everybody that has diabetes. I think we're all just unfortunate enough to be in a position where your body can just go, nah, I'm checking out, see you later. Yeah. So, you know, you just can never tell. But I am shitting myself for that day that comes, to be fair. It's it's a weird sensation, almost as if um, you've had a GA at the hospital and they've knocked you out and you wake up a second later, but actually five hours has passed and, you, and you're not aware of time. It's not like being asleep. Um, yeah. The level of confusion is huge. When I, in the past, when I've woken up in hospital, I thought I'm being attacked and I'll start fighting. But then quite quickly, I'll, I'll oh, shit i'm in hospital and then emotion hits me because i've worked out what's happened i don't know whether that happens to anybody else or whether they're sort of aware of things immediately but for me there's well in the past anyway there's been oh god a few a few maybe a few minutes of confusion until i've worked out what's happened that's but, absolutely crazy that is terrifying yeah yeah, I suppose it's been so long and hopefully it won't ever happen again. But, you know, with advances in technology now, if you're using a CGM or something like that, it just gives you that kind of advanced notice, advanced notice that something's not as it should be and you can stop the hypo early. And the CGM I use has certainly helped me many times to uh, catch the low and send it back the other way before things have become too severe. In the past, I would have been in a severe hypo um, and fighting to get back the opposite way, fighting to get back to normal without a CGM. So te I think technology, um, although, you know, I joke on Twitter and I'll say maybe we should go back to MDI and finger tests and all of that. Actually, you know, technology, I think, does save lives when it works. And <laughs> not, it doesn't always work, but when it works, I think it's, I think it's amazing. And I think obviously that's going to be the future for. See, yeah, I think we are of opposite of opinions with that. Um, and obviously, cause I've said before and people usually just tend to leave it to, uh, you know, stick like shit to the bottom of your shoe when I uh, comment saying, no, I don't like all of this <laughs> tech and stuff like that. People really don't like it when I say things like that, but I totally get how it helps people and I totally get how it is saving people's lives and it's not to take away from that. Yeah. Um, it's more that if I had something that was constantly telling me what my blood sugars were and things like that, I think it would create so much anxiety and drama within my life that I wouldn't be able to function normally as a human being. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very in terms of like my diabetes and stuff like i've already said i'm very like carefree and i don't really take it very seriously um even though i know i should and and all of that kind of you know your dsm will tell you blah 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 um but i would constantly be sat there checking what my bloods were and trying to get it to like that that bang on five or whatever it is that i would be aiming for that day yeah and i, I just don't feel like that would give me a quality of life that i would want it's a good point because when I first started using tech, it becomes almost like habitual, your constant checking of it. You know, when you know yourself, when you feel hypo, maybe you'll take your finger test and it'll say four or something, you know, and you'll deal with it. And sometimes you might feel hyper and you're thirsty and you're peeing and you'll deal with it as well in the, op in the op opposite way. You'll inject, of course. Um, with a CGM or with flash, you do tend to check a lot and make minor adjustments. I, I found I did at first, and I've been using this for maybe 18 months or so. Um, less so now. As I'm talking to you now, um, I've still checked, but I've, <laughs> I've checked once in that time. But in the past, I might be checking, oh, God five six seven times an hour because yeah. the data's there and it's so easy and as you said it can take over your life 
it's just way too much for me. I, you know, the last time I checked my bloods today was this morning when I had breakfast. I just can't, I can't fathom checking it so much. It, it makes me worry thinking about having to test that much. Yeah. It genuinely sends me into like a, some sort of weird shame spiral because I know that I should test more. Um, and then I don't. So I am pretty much like a really bad diabetic, like in terms of what you're told to do and how to regulate yourself and stuff like that. I, I just do not have the mental capability to be able to cope with that. I feel like I would very much be on, on the side of, well, what's the point of doing any of it yeah. if I was to do so much of it? And I think it would send me the opposite way. Yeah. Yeah, no, and I think I think for some people it, it does affect them that way. I do think it it can send you down like this. I don't mean like a shame spiral in terms of you you constantly um, aggravated by the fact that you've got diabetes and things like that, but that you constantly it's your fault. It's your fault. Your sugar isn't where it should be. It's your fault. This this and this, and it's mm. it's not. At the end of the day, you are just a sack of meat that is trying to just get on in the world with something that don't really work yeah so you know it's it's just about cracking on with it and i can't i can't put that much effort into that <laughs> it just terrifies me yeah i i completely understand that and nobody i guess nobody is the same and also how you live your life and how you work and the amount of time that you have in your life can also it can dictate how you manage your conditions diabetes obviously one one of them but it's time consuming, you know, just changing sensors and, oh, you know, I'm just going to get my phone and check the app, see what Dexcom says. And you, if you do that all day long, that adds up to a large amount of time of your life, which is taking up checking and looking at numbers, making minor adjustments. But you're, you're happy in your, in your world and how you, how you deal with things. And I guess you're, dsm or your your doctor is not overly amused by the i'll just do what the fuck i want and it's working for me sort of well perspective or are they yeah happy? i've i have two um opposing opinions on this with my doctor and my dsm um my doctor every once in a while i have to go for a meeting with my doctor because i don't buy enough um uh, lancets and things like that um obviously you know as as far as a doctor sees it you change your lancet every time you test your blood as diabetics see it no 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 we don't do that that's just stupid and it's a waste <laughs> of money yeah but you know and it's just the general consensus you know i think a lot of people do do that use you know one at least like maybe three times if not a lot more i have seen on there that there's a lot of people that don't really test them uh, don't really change them sorry at all if they can help it um but he he actually gets me to go in for little interviews why aren't you buying these because we don't think you're testing your blood if you're not getting those but i'm still getting all of my test strips and things like that so does that not just signal to you that i am still doing that like it's you know it's kind of crazy yeah. um whereas my diabetic specialist nurse isn't bothered um because i've had those conversations with her before she's talked to me about changing background insulins and things like that and i know i know quite a lot of it i like getting into detail with stuff and when i was first diagnosed i got into all about titration rates and things like that all the sort of stuff that people go oh we don't really bother with that kind of thing yeah i was interested so i got into it um so she was really impressed with that so she's she now has this opinion of me that i get into all the detail and stuff like that okay and i tell her that i don't i don't actually do that much work into it now um but my um, HbA1c has gone down to 50-something. Like I said, I don't really pay attention anymore. Um, yeah. <laughs> but like high, high 50s, um, which is fine by me because um, when we first did my HbA1c, I think it was over 100. Um, wow. So, yeah, so I was, I was absolutely fine with that. Um, you know, and it, it's been going down every six months since. So she's not bothered so long as she sees the results that she needs to see and she understands that I don't take it very seriously. But if I'm heading in the right direction, then why rush myself into trouble? Yeah, of course. So, it's whereas he's, he's not interested. He just literally wants me to be ordering everything every month. Yeah. He doesn't care about anything else. So, yeah. which is nice. It's nice to hear from a doctor, you know. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> 
But it's working for you, isn't it? Clearly it's working for you. You've got H an A1C in the 50s and, you know, I don't know what the number's supposed to be. It's 50-something, isn't it? So if it's in the 50s, then... I was going to say, I think it's like low 50s, isn't it? It's something like near 52, somewhere like that. Um, I did go on the Daphne course and they did tell me, but I didn't really take a lot from that either because they wanted to just reset all of my ratios to one-on-one -on -one and I wasn't having any of it. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, I just do what I want, basically, and I will fight anybody on it. I'm not really interested. Good. So And so you should. I mean, it's your diabetes and how you deal with it is down to you. And if it I see, um, clearly it works for you. So why would you change? Why would you, why would you need to change? Unless something changes, you know, maybe you mentioned maybe you're still perhaps in a honeymoon phase with it and it could develop, I guess, over time. But I, I just, I doubt it at four years. I think maybe this is the way it's going to be. So, yeah, I think maybe I'm just done now. Just my my chicken's cooked. I'm I've had enough. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, it's 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 done. It's leveled out and it's petered. Um, the only the only thing that is really different for me that I do a lot more of, I think, than most other people, is my background insulin. Really surprisingly, um, most people say I oh, do a maximum of about twenty units. I'm on at least um, thirty. Uh, 65 units a day Ooh, okay for because i have to do several injections of background insulin um but that keeps me in line so well, that's a well that works for you i've never heard of that i mean i guess but no we're not all the same how we will take whatever we need to take to to get by but 65 it's kind of i don't i think i take 30 well i tweak all the time so i take somewhere between 30 and 35 depending yeah on, exercise and again sort of what i've eaten in the day anyway but do, do you find you so you multiple inject i inject twice with that do you, yeah. do you take more than twice or i do i do just do it twice um but it can it can vary i do the same as you i do change um so i do it tends to be about 27 units per injection a day now mm -hmm. um it, when I first was diagnosed, it was 15, so it was 30. Um, and obviously, that's just because my HbA1c and stuff was so high. They were like, well, we'll start you off on this rate and see where you go from it. Yeah. Um, but I was constantly running on a high. so um, And it was nothing to do with the amount that I was eating. It was literally that my flat line was sitting on a high, and I could not get it any lower without creating a hypo. That's it. So, yeah. So it just literally had to keep on going up and up and up. So, like I say, with with it with thinking that it's different types of diabetes it's not just type one and type two there's all these like thousands of others that are in there yeah um i do think that it's it's something where i'm not creating regulatory insulin i might be actually creating some some something else that's actually helping me deal with my day-to-day -day. so like when i eat stuff and things like that yeah. um but not not to actually just keep it all in check and keep it in line and keep it where it should be. Yeah. But you know, I'm not a doctor and I don't really know. I just make shit up while I go along. <laughs> but it it works for you. But yeah, what you say makes sense, and you seem to understand it, you know, in in a good level of detail as well, which is good. So there's that, and we get we're kind of getting on with time, but. What's coming up, Harvey? And you know, I've pestered you about this since last, I don't know what, May, June or something, maybe? We do maybe. meet, Harvey, we do meet and you don't come. And I know it's because you live at the far corners of the universe. I live out in the fucking sticks. You've got more chance of Squee coming to see you than you've got me coming to see you. It's just <laughs> too far. Too far. Squee is coming to see us. I know. September. Super exciting. Yeah. I think she's staying in London. So come on, Harvey. London. I know. I think, I think we're going to have to make like a city trip, aren't we? Yeah. Come on. What? We're going to have to do something. I'm a small town girl. I don't do this kind of thing. I'm living in my lonely world, okay? Like, I, I just can't. I can't. Do, I, I figured you like a journey reference. You are a straight white man. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I just can't. I can't deal with it. I don't drive. That's the problem that I have for, for meetups and things like that. You're all too far away. Yeah. Um, and because I live so easternly, 
um i have to go on at least three or four trains and it ends up being like a six hour journey for a two hour meet up so you know it's it's it ends up being like a full part of a day um and that's too much even even for me and how much i don't give a shit about my diabetes that's too much travel for me in one day i feel yeah yeah it must be would that be the case even getting getting to london have you not got a way of getting to london easy or no, we've got like um, it's it's two two train journeys to London, and it's three hours to rugby. It's longer. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah, it's tra- trains. It's absolute garbage. The state of the economy. You know what I mean? <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, maybe but, yeah. if if Squee comes to, she's getting a lot of mentions. She'll be pleased about this. If Squee comes to London in September, maybe we could do something and move Midlands meets down, down south. I think, yeah, I definitely think we could. We could do like a city meet, even if it were at London and it was somewhere a little bit higher up that was easier for everyone else to get to as well. Um, because London is something I can do. Um, places that are that are west of me are more difficult because there's only, there only tends to be north and south lines. So. Yeah. Okay, understood. Well, um, maybe we can work something out. We've got, um tad coming up in march talking about diabetes you're not going are you no i am not (laughs) (laughs) okay (laughs) i'm quite firm about that no (laughs) i just like you all keep talking about these things where you go and talk about diabetes and stuff like that it it doesn't it doesn't do anything for me for me to go to something like that it would be great to go to meet up with you guys and actually meet people um <clears throat> you know because i am so totally internet famous that people need to meet me but um i i just don't get the conversation part of it and i'm not going to sit there and be quiet while someone else is talking about like new tech that i don't have any interest as i've already said yeah. you know what i mean it's it, it doesn't fulfill me in any way it doesn't make me excited to go and see that thing it like to actually go and meet you guys would be amazing but then i would have to sit and listen to that lecture and it's just not gonna happen i didn't stay in school yeah. for a reason you know <laughs> i can i can i can see i'm i've never been before i've never been to any sort of convention before but what I gather is, you know, it's, they, they, can, they chop and change the subjects and the speakers. So if somebody comes on and it's bullshit and you're just falling asleep, you know there's going to be somebody new soon after. Yeah. That, and that might change it and spark you into life. But beyond that, I'm aware with Tad that people do tend to go out and have an evening in London beyond that. Um, I've heard of one or two things happening, which may be quite amusing. So, you know, I guess there'll be pictures, maybe videos, and it might inspire you um, to I'm, come on. To one. I mean, you have you have heard of me before, right? You do know I'll do like a good night out. So <laughs> I, I, will, I would definitely be up for something like that. But I just don't feel like I could go all of that way just to listen to some guy talk about new tech if it's not a fully automated mechanical pancreas i am not interested yeah yeah oh, I, I suppose maybe that will happen one day when it does we'll all be there listening tuning in i suppose but you're damn right i'm gonna be a cyborg <laughs> that's my aim in life <laughs> you feel like a terminator harvey didn't we have a chat about terminator on Twitter? Oh, no and i had to dangle the bait for you to bite about <laughs> you, you don't even know which terminator films which i am i'm really upset about it I i'm do. really mad at you about that i do and you bit <laughs> <laughs> the first time i've ever got you anyway um i'm sure yeah i'm sure you'll come along to a meet at some stage and maybe it's when squee comes to the uk um later this year and we'll all catch up and it'll be fun and boozy and foodie and bitchy maybe kind of definitely bitchy (laughs) good okay maybe we should stop i think that's been about half an hour and we've covered lots of subjects damn we've spoken about a lot 
We have. We have. We it wasn't supposed to be a Valentine's special because we did not talk about Valentine's that much. We, we no, we didn't. We touched on it, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think that was just a way of starting the conversation. Let's talk about Valentine's and how shit it is. And then we'll get into pretty it. Much, like, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Harvey, it's been amazing. Um, this will be on YouTube soon. 